Hi, everyone. I'm David Aragona, and this is the 2021 Timeform US Road to the Derby series. We've got two derby preps on tap this weekend. I just did a video on the Southwest Stakes at Oaklawn yesterday. Today, we're going to focus on a different Saturday derby prep that's taking place at Gulfstream Park. That's the Grade 2 Fountain of Youth. This one offering 50 qualifying points towards the winner, a mile and a 16th over that short finish line on that main track into Gulfstream Park. Let's throw up the field for this race. It's 10 runners on tap, but we've got a standout in this group, the 9 to 5 morning line favorite greatest daughter this horse is towards the top of many people's derby lists uh, i know there are some high expectations for him based both on his performances as well as his pedigree and the fact that he's trained by suge mckay who tends to bring these horses along slowly but surely and he's just developing at the right rate for a race like this looks like a standout in this field we've got some horses that are coming from different directions to challenge him a few horses coming out of a beaten effort behind him in the holy bull last time the greatest honor was a pretty impressive winner of that race so we'll see if he can make a two stakes wins in a row and this fountain of youth before we get to the contenders, let's take a look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector for this race. And we've got some speed drawn down towards the inside. The number one, Drain the Clock, and the number two, Prime Factor, showing up towards the front end. But the Timeform U.S. pace projector is not characterizing this as being any kind of pace that's favoring front runners or closers necessarily. There's no label on this pace projector, and there's not a ton of speed in this field. I would imagine that the number one, Drain the Clock, will end up being the pace setter, given that he's shown speed in sprint races and is now stretching out to two turns. Uh, the number two prime factor, I think he'd be more of a stalking type in this race. And if I had to move one chiclet around on this pace projector, it would probably be that of the number seven, Tarantino, who's shown back in fourth place. He showed some improved early speed on the dirt last time, so I could see him being a little more forwardly placed. And if he had more dirt efforts under his belt, the pace projector would adjust and have him closer to the pace in this race. So I think one of those three will be up towards the front end, but would probably drain the clock controlling. And we'll see how much pace the number eight greatest honor gets to run and do but i would imagine he'll get a similar trip to the one he did last time in the holy bowl and with that let's jump right into the past performances of that morning line favorite the number eight greatest honor He's listed at 9 to 5 on the morning line. I could see him going off much lower than that because, as I said, he does kind of stick out in this field and the way that his form is going. I don't really anticipate him taking a step backwards. This horse showed ability right from the start of his career. Took him four races to break his maiden, though. That's not atypical for a Shug McGahey runner. He's not the type of trainer to rush them along in their early starts. Uh, this horse got some experience under his belt. He's gotten better as they progressively stretched him out in distance. He ran a winning race three back when he lost that heartbreaking head decision at Aqueduct. But since then, he's been unstoppable. He was visually impressive breaking his maiden at Gulfstream two back. And let's take a look at his last race when he won that Holy Bowl by over five lengths over this same distance at Gulfstream Park. He took the lead at the top of the stretch after getting a wide trip around the far turn, and he was traveling very well to the quarter pole. And once Jose Ortiz asked him for his best run, he just shuts the door on this field, easily opens up on some horses behind him that are also in this race, like Tarantino, M Prime Factor, as well as Papa Two, who's fourth. And given the way that he beat those horses so soundly, I don't anticipate any of them turning the tables on him. And if you're worried about Greatest Honor potentially taking a step backwards, we'll take a look at this statistic for Shug McGahey, which actually says the opposite. Uh, this is a relatively small sample, but I think it's speaking pretty loudly. Over the past five years, with three-year-olds who won their last races, racing in dirt route graded stakes races, Shug McGahey is six for 10, actually just a neck shy of being seven for 10. That's a 60 cent win rate with an ROI that's over $4.50. Now, greatest honor is not going to be a price in this race, so don't pay too much attention to that ROI. But this set that just speaks to the fact that Shug McGahey, once he gets these horses in form they continue to head in the right direction and if greatest honor continues improving he's just going to be really tough for this field to beat so i uh, don't want to spoil everything but i'll, I'll say it right now I i'm not picking against this horse but we will look at some other contenders in this race moving on to one horse that finished behind greatest honor last time that being prime factor now prime factor was just making his second career start in the holy bowl last time and you saw that by the time they got to the top of the stretch greatest honor had already taken over the race and prime factor kind of threw in the towel and spit the bit a little bit in the last eighth of a mile of that race. Now, maybe he just doesn't want to go this far. I think that's reasonable. Uh, quality road, while he can get horses that go longer distances, he can also be a bit of a speed influence. So I, I think that while there is stamina on the bottom side of Prime Factor's pedigree, given that he ran so well sprinting in his debut, I think we need to see the evidence that he really wants to go a mile on the 16th. And furthermore, 
some might want to be forgiving of the last race because Todd Pletcher, when he moves horses from maiden races directly into stakes company, he doesn't have great numbers doing it. But still, this horse got a great trip in there, and I thought he should have shown more if he was really going to be up to the task of turning the tables on greatest honor. So he was not the alternative that I was going to go to. Another horse coming out of the Holy Bull is Tarantino. He was the runner-up in that race. Now, that was his first ever start on dirt, and he ran like maybe that's going to be his preferred surface. Significantly, it's proving his time form US speed figure up to a 111. That number puts him within range of Freitas Donner, who, I remember, got a 113 winning that Holy Bull. Uh, but Tarantino gave it a bit of a pace bump for being close to an honest pace in the early going and hanging on the best of the horses who were involved at that early pace. Still, though, he was beaten almost six lengths by Greatest Donner honor. All in all, I thought he got a pretty good trip last time. He's likely to get a similar stalking trip in this race, but again, he's just a horse that's coming off a career best effort. I'd be more concerned about him taking a step backwards than I would be greatest honor. So he's not the horse that I would look to to turn the tables on him either. Uh, let's look at some horses that are coming from different directions. The number four fire at will is listed as the seven to two second choice on the morning line. And he definitely has some questions to answer in this race, but I don't think you should question his overall talent because he showed what kind of horse he was in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, his final start of 2020. Let's take a look at that most recent victory when he won off by three lengths at 30 to one odds. This was a big upset, but I can't deny he ran a pretty nice race to beat this solid field of turf horses. He got a very good trip, saving ground around the turns, but he takes over in mid-stretch here and draws off pretty impressively at the end of this race. I was one of those who thought that maybe his upset win in the Pilgrim coming into this race was a bit of a fluke, but he showed that it was no aberration at all. He's actually just an improving horse, and he uh, that culminated with his top performance of his two-year-old season in this Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. That 112 time form to a speed figure would make him very competitive here if he could translate it to dirt. I'm just somewhat skeptical that he can. He did win his lone dirt start, but that came over a sloppy track in a field that was badly depleted by scratches in that with anticipation last summer. Just looking at the way he won that race, I, I didn't think that his stride translated as well to dirt as it would need to for him to do well in a race that's much tougher like this one. S furthermore, if you look at his pedigree, while Declaration of War can get a dirt horse, the dam side is really more turfy. His dam's a half sister to decorated invader who actually is also by declaration of war and he's just a turf horse through and through so i feel like fire at will is probably gonna be best on the turf but i get why the connections are taking a shot here i'm just not going to bet on him Moving on to a couple more alternative, a couple more alternatives. Uh, the number one drain the clock. I talked about him at the top with reference to the pace projector. Uh, he's likely to be the speed in this race, and he's coming off a couple of stakes victories that were blowout wins. So I think you have to take him seriously here. Let's take a look at his most recent victory in the Swale, a Grade Three event going seven furlongs. He took this race over on the far turn and just drew away in the stretch pretty impressively. The problem that I have with drain the clock is. If you look through some of the fields that he beat and the also rans, there were some short prices in these races that didn't show up. And those that finished behind him, they just don't really stack up against this field from a class perspective. So he's going to get tested against a much tougher field for the first time in the Stanton of Youth. And he's going to have to do so while, fa while facing a new challenge of going two turns for the first time. So I'm just a little bit skeptical of him handling that added challenge. McLean's music can certainly get horses that get at least a mile and a 16. So I'm not so worried about him from a pedigree standpoint standpoint, but he's going to get some pressure on the front end from horses like Prime Factor and Tarantino. So while I do think he's a horse that could potentially get into the money here, he's not the horse that I'm going to turn to as an alternative to greatest honor. One more horse to take a look at is uh, the number 10, Papa 2, drawn all the way on the outside in this race. Uh, he was one of a few that was beaten by Greatest Honor in the Holy Bowl last time. But if I'm going to take any horse out of that race to use underneath Greatest Honor, perhaps Papa 2 is the one that you want to use to inject some value into exotics. Because he didn't run that badly in the Holy Bowl, was chasing on the inside around the far turn, had to angle out to the center of the track for the stretch drive. And all things considered, he was finishing on pretty well, actually almost got by a prime factor for third at the end of that race race. And we'll take a look at his race two back in the Mucho Macho Man. I thought he ran pretty well in this race. He was no match for Mutasebek, the winner who's now on the sidelines. But he just seems like a really game horse who's got some finish to him. He's not giving up at the end of this race, even though Mutasebek took it over and dominated to the wire. Papa 2 is gamely running after him. He's never a horse that takes that much money, even though he's got some speed figures that put him in the mix. So I think he could get into the exotics once again here. I'm not viewing him as a win candidate, but if I'm looking for horses to primarily 
necessarily compete a complete exactus and trifectus here. I think Papa 2 is a horse that I do want to use underneath. But as I said towards the beginning of this video, I'm not trying to beat Greatest Honor. We can throw out my picks for this race. I went 8, 7, 10, 4 with Greatest Honor on top. He's going to be a very short price. I'm not viewing him as a win wager or anything like that. Mostly, if I play anything in this race, it would be to recommend exotic wagers with horses like Tarantino and Papa 2 underneath and trying to beat some of those shorter prices, like perhaps Prime Factor and Fire at Will. But it's going to be greatest honor for me in the Grade 2 Fountain of Youth on Saturday at Gulfstream Park.